Hello, my name is Matthew Shen, and I'm from the RITS lab at Imperial College London. Today, I'll be talking about the research detailed in our paper titled A Scalable Variable Stiffness Revolute Joint Based on Layer Jamming for Robotic Exoskeletons. Robotic exoskeletons are a major focus of robotics research due to their wide range of uses, specifically in rehabilitation robotics. Previous research has focused on the design of rigid exoskeleton frames, which are strapped onto a user. While strong, these designs inherently lack flexibility and the ability to ergonomically adapt to different users. Alternatively, the natural flexibility of soft robotics has demonstrated the ability to confirm to users when implemented as an exoskeleton. However, it is limited in restraint and force output. A recent development in solving this problem is the use of verbal stiffness elements in soft robotics, which can become rigid and flexible to suit the user's needs. This allows the advantages of both soft and rigid exoskeletons to be obtained, where a device is capable of recovering to a user. Two effective methods of achieving verbal stiffness are layer jamming and granular jamming, which both rely on using cumulative friction to increase the stiffness of the overall structure, typically activated with negative pressure. Layer jamming, as seen here, uses multiple layers of material, which produces a great tensile stress when pressure is applied compressing the layers together. Ground jamming, on the other hand, uses small particles to achieve the same effect, as seen here. A tube is filled with small balls, which can no longer move past each other when a vacuum is applied. Though both techniques work, layer jamming is superior in two critical aspects. Firstly, it can achieve a higher stiffness with lower volume, as seen in recent research. And secondly, it is hollow in the center, which allows for more complex designs, such as being able to send tools or medication down through the center. In this paper, we have created three pair types of one degree of freedom variable stiffness revolute joints based on layer jamming to study their suitability for use in soft robotic exoskeletons. The prototypes measure 25 mm, 37.5 mm, and 50 mm in diameter. And these diameters are comparable with the joints in the human hand, specifically in the finger, wrist, and elbow. Both theoretical and experimental analysis were conducted to test the joints. Overall, our results indicate that such joints may be most suited for use in human finger joints, where sufficient torque can be supplied by the current design to aid finger movement. The basic design proposed in our paper can be seen from these two CAD drawings. The setup consists of circular layers of flaps which overlap, encapsulated by two layers of membranes as seen here. By using a vacuum pump to generate a negative pressure between the layers, atmospheric pressure compresses the layers together to achieve layer jamming, which stiffens the overall structure. Variable friction can then be fine-tuned through control of the applied negative pressure. The joints were manufactured using a variety of materials. The latex membranes which encapsulated the layers were cut and joined by hand. The joint ends were 3D printed using PLA plastic, and the layers were laser cut from mylar sheets. The joints were then assembled by hand, with the overlapping layers presenting a particular challenge, specifically at the smallest diameter due to its intricacy. Here we have the final assembled joints. From left to right, the 15mm, the 37.5mm, and 25mm diameter, and their comparative sizes. To gauge the effectiveness of a variable stiffness joint, one of the most important aspects to investigate is the maximum stiffness, or maximum resistive torque. Kim et al. carried out such a calculation through analyzing the motion of an infinitesimal segment of the layers. From this, they are able to derive the maximum resistive torque of each flap around the circumference of the tubular structure as a function of angle of the rotational axis as seen here. To extend the calculation to include the bending orientation of the joint, a modification of the effective overlapping length of the flaps can be imposed as a function of the configuration angle theta of the joint. The theoretical results of the individual flap contributions to the total torque can be seen here. Shown in orange, a symmetric contribution to the resistive torque is seen at zero degree bending, which is as expected due to the symmetry of the joint at this orientation. At 45 degrees bending, an asymmetric contribution as shown in blue is seen. This is due to the bending of the joint, which causes the effective length of one half to decrease and the other half to increase. Interestingly, total torque calculated by summing over all flaps is equal in both cases, and the theoretical maximum torque and force achieved in, can be seen in this table here.
The experimental analysis was conducted to observe the performance of the developed joints. Individual tests were conducted by pushing the stiffened joint 10 mm with a linear actuator to measure the maximum resistance force output using a load cell. The setup was reset between each trial by rotating the joint through its full range of motion and reapplying the negative pressure. Tests were conducted for a range of pressures from 0 to 80 kPa in increments of 20 kPa at three orientations for each of the three prototypes. The orientation tested were 0 degrees, negative 45 degrees pushing anti-clockwise and 45 degrees pushing clockwise. For the negative 45 and 45 degree orientations, the 0 kPa data points cannot be obtained due to the structure naturally bouncing back from the elasticity of the mylar layers. These were then repeated five times to obtain an average. Results from the experiments are shown here. We can see an increase in stiffness with both pressure and diameter, and the stiffness follows a mostly linear trend with pressure. However, the data for the 37.5 mm diameter joints in orange deviate from this at high vacuum. Furthermore, the results from the joints at negative 45 and 45 degrees bending angle are not identical indicating a symmetry of the manufactured product. We also observe a reduction in torque at the negative 45 and 45 degrees orientation compared to the initial zero degrees. From the observed data, we can draw several key observations and findings to analyze the prototypes. Firstly, from the data taken at different orientations against pressure, we confirm that there is a linear trend between torque and pressure. This result is expected due to a linear relationship between friction and applied normal force. Next. The high pressure data points for the 37.5 mm prototypes do not show increase at maximum torque. We suspect that this is due to the prototype buckling, which seems to be amplified if there is a leakage in the inner membrane, as the pressure applied on the outer membrane will press inwards without being balanced by equal force from inside. We also expect from theoretical analysis for the bending orientation of the joint to not matter. We see that for all diameters, the zero degree orientation provides a higher resistive torque than the negative 45 and 45 degree orientations, and this may be a result of the joint losing its perfect tubular shape when bent, which is assumed in the theoretical analysis. Furthermore, the results of the negative 45 degree and 45 degree orientations are not equal. This is surprising due to the design of the joint being completely symmetric. We suspect that this is due to bias caused by misalignments during manufacturing. Lastly, there is a large discrepancy in the numerical values between the experimental and theoretical results, up to two orders of magnitude. This is likely due to the bending of the joints being allowed through bending of the mylar layers, contrary to the layers slipping across each other as idealized in the theoretical analysis. Bending of the layers requires much less torque of the, to be achieved, hence the difference in results. In this paper, we tested a 1 degree of freedom revolute variable stiffness joint at three diameters, 25, 37.5, and 50 millimeters. Each of these joints were tested at three orientations, 0 degrees and negative 45 degrees pushing anti-clockwise and 45 degrees pushing clockwise, and at pressures of 0 to 80 kilopascals in increments of 20 kilopascals. The joints demonstrated maximum resistive torques of 0 0.216, 0.13, 38 and 0 0.054 Nm for the 50, 37.5, and 25 mm joints. In terms of practical usage, we see the applications of this in medical fields to support injured patients. A possible implementation which can be achieved is shown here. But to truly utilize the advantages of having a hollow center, it would be more ideal if the layer jamming structure was wrapped around the user's joints. When considering the practical uses, we have to compare the diameter of the human joints with the joints that we have developed. The 50 mm prototype is comparable with the human wrist, which is subject to torques of 8.62 Nm for men and 5.20 Nm for women. Our current prototype clearly provides inf insufficient torque to support this. On the other hand, the 25 mm radius prototype can be compared with the human finger, subject to a torque of 0.004 to 0.096 Nm on a daily basis. For our 25 mm prototype, this can, which can already support a maximum torque of 0.054 Nm, this can already be considered as a potential use case of this design. Finally, further research is required for consideration of exoskeletons for joints and children.
and that will take me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.